Hey, what's going on YouTube? This is Fee from One Unique Life. I'm here to bring forth another video, a highly requested video, to talk about a modality that I absolutely love. I absolutely stand behind it and I think that if anybody chooses to go into this specific career of computer tomography, um, formerly known as CAT scan, you will be very, very um, excited. You will be very satisfied with um, the job options and the job opportunities that this specific modality presents. Um, you know, if you watch my other videos, I think, you know, I've shared, I actually provide the link here um, in my other videos for the career series. I have experience in x-ray and then um, from x-ray I went into CAT scan. I guess right out of x-ray school, I think I only worked in actual x-ray that modality for maybe a year and a half um, and at that point I was looking for something new something better something more and at the specific site that I actually am still working at the CT position became available and I'm like hey why not let's learn and I am so happy I took that step I did CT from 2010 to about 2016 and just the transition and the evolvement of the technology is super amazing um, and uh, like I said, as an x-ray tech, always be seeking to uh, cross-train because a lot of these uh, organizations and hospitals are looking for people who have experience in multiple modalities because they're thinking if I can just hire someone that can do x-ray, yes, that's great, but then if I can hire someone that can actually run both modalities or two modalities, that's even uh, better. And it's even better for you because it makes you a little bit more marketable. So for those of you that are, I'm not even sure if there are currently um, dedicated CT schools, but I know that a lot of people start with the x-ray modality and then they transfer into CAT scan. And that's something that I would recommend just to kind of get your feet wet as to how it works in the hospital, kind of get the flow of things. And a lot of these hospitals, such as mine, will pay for you to learn that modality. So I'm all about just trying to do things um, the best way, the cheapest way, but, you know, get the better quality. And I think that hands-on for me was paramount because I'm a hands-on learner. And so it helped me out in a major way. So you're here because you're one of two people. And I have a little bit of notes here that I want to kind of um, go back and forth because I don't want to leave anything out. So you are an x-ray tech and you're considering cross-training into CAT scan. And I think that this that's a great decision. You will not regret that decision. Look at me closely. You will not regret that decision. Or you're not an x-ray tech and you are desire, desiring to come uh, become a CT tech through formal education. I know at one point there were um, some programs that you can go through to go directly to CAT scan, but I am not even certain if that is around. That was years ago. So definitely look into that. However, I went through x-ray school through Ferris State University and um, I got my radiology degree and then that allowed me to kind of transfer into other modalities. Um, this modality is expanding. You guys just think about uh, before when it was called CAT scan, C-A-T scan, it's computed axial tomography. They had, they didn't have the sleep, slip ring technology that allows you to take continuous um, I call it uh, computerized x-rays on a continual basis. So the technology is crazy. Like that's why you will always have a job. You will always be learning. You will always be marketable if you have CAT scan under your wings. You have to do it. Um, so I would seriously advise anyone that is considering cross-training. And if you have an option, and if CT is an option, definitely do that. Um, so um, it it, it can be described as like if you have a loaf of bread and you take a look on the inside of that, you'll see actually what's inside of the bread. So an x-ray takes a picture of the loaf of, you know, itself. But CAT scan is slicing that slice of bread or that loaf of bread to actually get a little bit more detail. So if that's one way you can describe CAT scan, that'd be cool. So if you take a look here, these are the differences. You know, you'll see here, this is what a CAT scan image looks like. It's a CAT scan image, and you'll see that um, area, I put an arrow there, that's the heart. However, on the other side, you'll see this is what an x-ray image looked like. So it gives you, as you can see, a little bit more detail. Um, so a lot of people think that CT or computed tomography is just you're pushing a button, but you are required to know your stuff. You are required to, I mean, if you, um, a lot of 
sites such as mine where stroke um, facilities. So if a patient comes through and you see an area of ischemia or if you see blood on the brain, you want to be able to let that physician know right away. So it's best and it's, it's more advantageous for you to kind of know what you're doing. And the more you see them and the more you become um, exposed to them, then the more comfortable you'll be to let the doctor know, hey, I think this person has a PE or uh, blood on the brain. This field is so rewarding. So let's talk about money because I know that a lot of people are like, okay, listen, I just need to know how much I'm going to make. I don't know if you are that way, but I am. So I want to remind you that CT technologists are in high demand. High demand. Um, at the site that I am currently working at, um, we were having a hard time recruiting people um, because a lot of techs, they'll get that skill and a lot of them become travel techs. And I'm going to put a video about the opportunities with travel techs. If you are young, you don't have kids, or you have kids that are older or even younger and traveling is not an um, issue, you have to look at that video about traveling because that is buku easy money. But don't let me get too excited because I can do that. So because we were having such a hard time recruiting people, we had to... Um, advance the pay grade. So I believe at one point um, the, the pay grade, let's think of it from pay grade level 1 to level 10. Let's say CAT scan was at a level 7. We had to bump CAT scan up to a level 9 because we had to make these positions more lucrative to get techs in that seat to learn this modality and make this money. So um, I started in CT back in 2016 I believe my starting pay was about $26 per hour. And get granted, that was back in 2016. So, and that was at like a pay grade seven. Now we're at a pay grade nine. That was not including the seven and a quarter more per hour for the shift premium because I started on second shift. Um, so not only did I work uh, at the hospital, but I also worked at an imaging center. Typically, imaging centers pay a little bit less. Not always the case. The imaging center that I worked at, we primarily scanned the cardiacs. So people that were coming in that um, may have been uh, had factors for heart disease, we would scan the hearts. So there, I was making around twenty-one dollars an hour so there's a five dollar um, per hour difference but primarily in the imaging centers um, you're limited to just like first shift you don't see a lot of the emergent cases and things of that nature so a little bit of different um, clientele different demographic different type of imaging um, but like I said there's opportunities both in and outside the um, hospital so um, before I went to Angio I did learn that I, I was pregnant and I don't, if you don't have a LinkedIn account, please, I beg you to get a LinkedIn account. It's a professional site that allows recruiters to see what your interests are and they'll reach out to you if they have opportunities. And I was, I was not even looking, I was satisfied where I was, but I have a LinkedIn uh, account and a recruiter, he reached out to me and said, I have a 13 week assignment in Hawaii. Are you interested? I'm like, Oh my gosh, I'm pregnant. I can't go, but I would have loved to go. So again, CT is high in demand. Um, so, you know, just to touch a little bit about the travel um, tech experience, I have not traveled yet. However, I have a coworker who is uh, a traveler tech for uh, in the cath lab because I currently work in the cath lab and the money is amazing. So let me just leave it at that. Um, so most facilities, like I said, are hiring people who have the multiple modality experience. However, if you can get into a facility with your x-ray background and you know that they are willing to cross train you, you may not want to end up in x-ray, but you start in x-ray, get that free training and make yourself all the more marketable. Um, so it's, it's wonderful. There's a high demand for CT. Um, you are required to be registered because most facilities, it's tied to their reimbursement. Um, and at our facility, they are in such dire need for uh, CT Texas that they'll uh, give you, I believe, a year, maybe a year and a half after your hire date to um, get your registry. 
and they will supply you with like the study materials that you'll need, um, et cetera, et cetera. And I can go through some of the uh, requirements that um, you would need to pass that board. So there are a few requirements that you uh, must fulfill and some of them have changed since I worked in CT. So you'll have to have like the clinical experience requirements. So let's say you're an x-ray tech and you're, you transferred into that modality. Make sure you keep track of every exam that you complete because you will need those exams when you sit for your boards. They did add a structure uh, learning component. I think it's like 16 hours of formal learning, which could be a book and you'll you have a corresponding test or something like that. Um, and I believe prior to the pandemic, there were actual classes that you can go to to fulfill that. Um, and so I believe that there is a secondary option. So they might require you to have a primary registry, like I said, such as MRI or x-ray in order to become a CT tech. Um, I'll definitely check into that. Um, so yes, CT is the way to go. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. You are not in this alone. I want to help you along that journey. And if you haven't yet, make sure you hit that bell so that when I come out with that new material, you're first to know. Feel free to like, share, and subscribe, and I'll be back with more information about our career series. All right, thank you. Have a good night.